expansion and contraction are always an issue, but contraction is the one that's really gonna mess up your deck. Just so everybody knows, I built this deck 20 years ago, back in 2005, okay? So this deck is 20 years old, it's seen better days, but it's still going. Now this is a fully composite deck board. I don't even think these kind of boards are made anymore by this company, but I have a problem right here. And this is called contraction. When I built this deck, these two boards were touching. Now we did build it in the summertime. So the boards were probably warm. We probably didn't have them in the shade. And when we put them together, we installed them but over the years, this gap has slowly increased to the point of where it's now a half an inch, maybe uh, I'd say about a half an inch gap. I've also noticed that there's a gap right here that's bigger than the rest of the deck board gaps. So it is possible that the frame of the deck has separated some, but that again still has to do with expansion and contraction. So what happens on your deck? Let's say you're building a deck in July or August, you are using pressure treated hemlock as your frame and it's soaking wet. So you're putting a soaking wet frame or a wet frame. There is lumber out there now that is called KDAT, which is kiln dried after treatment, which would help minimize or possibly avoid what's going on here where you have the framing which is shrinking and then you have the composite which was expanding. So what happens with that is when the frame is shrinking and the composite is expanding, your fasteners are starting to twist. So that's why we use a lot of stainless steel fasteners in our finish work now because carbon screws have a tendency to snap. If we go to take these deck boards off, all these screws will snap. They've also lost all their colored coating, which was a gray color. And you can see it's a really fine color of rust now. So unfortunately I didn't use stainless steel screws on this deck. I was on a budget, so I used what I had that was available to me and that I could afford at the time. With that being said, what we're talking about today though mostly is contraction. Expansion happens when during the year in thermal climates. So let's say it gets 30 degrees or even in the teens where I live but today it's gonna to be 90 degrees outside. So this material over the years is moving like this and the framing, usually it shrinks. It may swell a little bit in the winter, but it's gonna shrink a certain amount no matter what. And it's gonna stay in that shrunken state after a certain amount of time. If I had the option nowadays, I would probably source some of the kiln dried after treatment materials or I'd go to an alternate material like aluminum framing or something of that nature that doesn't move around once it's installed. So I really had two things going on here to create this problem. The frame was shrinking and then eventually the material, the composite material also shrank. So right now it's gonna be the hottest it'll be this summer. And this board is, there's no way these boards are gonna expand back together. So two things have happened. The frame has shrank a little bit and pulled away, possibly pulled away over a member or something like that. And maybe we didn't have the proper amount of steel in it to keep that board from pulling away. And then the actual physical decking materials have also shrank. So that's why we have this big old gap right here. How do you fix that? Well, you probably, to really fix it, you would have to pull this board, move it over, and then deal with it on the end somehow, which we have a strategy for doing that nowadays, which is very helpful, but I think I'm just gonna leave it because I don't really have a way to fix this unless I just replace the board. These boards are no longer available. I can't purchase them. It would be a completely weird look. One thing I could do would be to obtain some kind of material Maybe I have a scrap piece of this or this. I could cut a strip out of this and put a piece going this way if it bugged me enough to where I just felt like I really needed to do something about it. But you know what? It doesn't bother me that much. I'm probably just gonna leave it, but that's what happened. So for you to avoid this from happening to you, a couple things you need to do. First of all, you're gonna have to make sure you install the boards as cool as you possibly can. If you leave these boards out in the sun in the middle of summer, they're gonna be naturally expanded. So once you put them together nice and tight and you walk away and you come back in the morning, there's gonna be a gap. Then you go through your summer cycle and winter comes and it gets really cold. Well, guess what? They're gonna shrink even more. 
So even if these boards were butt tight today in January, there still would be a small gap in between these two deck boards. Something just to think about is make sure these boards are nice and cool. Keep them in the shade, wet them down, whatever you gotta do to keep these boards as cool as possible so that throw them in the swimming pool, you know, whatever you gotta do to keep them cool so that when you install them, they're not already at their max expansion rate. And then using a good stainless steel fastener and plenty of them. So instead of putting them every 16 inches, maybe you put them every 12 inches instead. That'll help keep the materials from moving around so much. You'll notice that I actually use a, a deck board for my edging. A lot of people do not do that. I do my decks a little bit differently than others do. We do have a lot of pine needles. People say, well, don't pine needles get caught up in this groove? Yeah, they do. But a pressure washer does a really good job of taking them out. Again, this deck is 20 years old. I don't think it looks that bad for 20 years old, but yeah, I could do a little bit of work on it and make it a little bit nicer. The next thing I wanna tell you about, now this is totally my fault that this happened because I knew I shouldn't have done this, but I did it anyways, is the skirting that we used is vinyl. It really expands in the heat. And I pin the vinyl on both sides, top and bottom, and on the edges. You're not supposed to do that with, with vinyl skirting or vinyl lattice. You're supposed to pin one side tight and let the other side float so it has room to move. But with this being pinned, it bubbled, and then eventually it broke right here because it didn't have enough room for it to move around. As we go down the way, you can see right here that this miter has shrank. Now, I used to make a lot of my own custom trim and things like that. And you can see that this piece, this piece is a long piece of trim. And it used to be a tight miter right to this corner. And this piece, this piece is not very long. It didn't shrink. It was, it's only eight inches long. This piece, on the other hand, is 16 feet long or maybe 14 feet long, okay? And it did shrink. And it's kind of crazy that this little piece of composite shrank this much over the last few years, but it does. So the only way to avoid this is to make sure that you're putting these materials in when it's cool. It's either that or you butt joint this instead of putting in uh, this miter, which might not look quite as nice. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta weigh your options. Even if I glued and pocket, which you can't pocket screw some thin trim like this, there's gonna be some problems of this happening, of these separations, okay? Obviously shorter pieces. Now, another way to combat some of this would be to possibly put a seam right here where you cut this piece and then you bring the miter together, put it together, nail it together, whatever. And then you put another piece right here that gives the room to move back and forth, expanding and contracting so that this miter would stay nice. It's always my opinion, whenever you have a miter like this, it's gonna look better if this stays tight and that you pick up the slack somewhere else in the run. But then again, just like up here, you can see that this piece also has shrank and we have a big old gap right here. It's not quite as big as this side over here, but it's still quite large. So if I had some more of this material, it wouldn't be really hard for me to take this piece off and cut a longer board and just replace it. Again, now we're dealing on a curve. So there's a few more circumstances that happen when you start doing that as well. So that could be another issue, just trying to get the right length of the board because you're on a curve instead of on a straight. So that's why there's such a short piece here originally. But I think again, I was working in the heat and maybe our materials, this, this composite material absorbs a lot of heat. It gets a lot warmer than some of your other PVC boards do and other types of decking materials that you have. So those are a few tips for you guys for the hot summer months. If uh, you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget, we have a new podcast, guys, and we're launching that on an, a separate channel. Click the link below to check out our podcast. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.